Hi everyone and thanks for joining me for another video tutorial on how we can use our creative energies for art therapy, for communicating with our subconscious mind and manifesting our destiny and healing. In this video we are going to create a sacred vessel. A sacred vessel can be anything in which you would house your sacred objects. Um, you can infuse them with any sort of energy that you want. We're going to go through the process of creating a sacred vessel where you could store and infuse sacred items, charge them with specific energies, and create a sacred place to charge, infuse, amplify, with anything that you choose. So stay tuned as we create, I'm going to create a sacred vessel to store my decks, but this could also be used for anything. Jewelry, sacred objects such as stones, crystals, anything that you'd like to store in a sacred place, you can create this sacred vessel with many layers of words and images and consciousness embodied and imbued into the sacred vessel, therefore charging it with your sacred intentions and energy. Thanks for joining. Hi everyone. Many of you have commented over the years, what's with the basket I have here? So I'm going to do a video and the basket's going to be replaced once and for all. Um, I have, uh, I have a little bit of arthritis in my hands, and I'm also a musician and artist, so I really need my hands to play music. And um, th With the arthritis and all the years of just pounding decks into my hands, honestly, sometimes it would really bother me and it would really hurt. It was, it was irritating my hands. Uh, and what I do now is I shuffle like this, you know, pretty much in between readings. I do a bunch of those, and then I throw it in this basket. I've been doing this for a while. And it kind of evolved into a cool thing, too, because it allows for this real loose shuffle. So that just like that, I can just pull out the cards for your reading. And I really like that aspect of it. Although the plastic, you know, it does have to go. It's time. And I've been thinking about it for a long time. Back in the, you know, when I learned to read tarot back in the day, and prior to me coming along, it was always sort of a really a sacred thing. You would get your deck... And then you would sit with it and you would charge it up with your energy. It was called seasoning the deck. And you would season that deck. And you would charge in, in like almost like establishing a, a energetic relationship with the deck. And then you would even sleep with it under your pillow. And you would keep shuffling it and shuffling it. And then you would always wrap it in some sort of natural fiber cloth. The most common was always silk, but I also had a bunch of uh, cotton ones I used to use because I really liked the feel of cotton. And it was never supposed to be just on a table. You would lay it on your cloth. Um, but it was supposed to be cloaked or, ke or kept or stored in a natural material. So I, I was at uh, Home Depot, or no, it was Lowe's, excuse me, and they had these little boxes, and they were like $4.00. And it's just so, it's a wood little box. It's actually made to put like silverware in the drawer, but I mean, look, it's perfect. It's almost the exact same size. It's going to be perfect for my purposes. So, and I really like it. It's going to work out well. But I thought I wanted to decorate it because I've been doing a furniture painting too. I was doing furniture painting for the last year or so, a couple years maybe. So I bought a couple of these. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my intention into it. You could do this with jewelry, you could do this with even your art supplies. Uh, there's just, there's no limit to things that you could keep in a box and it doesn't have to be in this type of box. You don't have to use it as a shuffling box for this purpose. You know, you could get one with a lid and it could be just a storage box. You could keep your crystals and stones in there. You know, there's all, any kind of sacred or magical tools or special items and what you what we're going to write on the outside of it and what we're going the the intention that we're going to set for this box and the energy that we're going to um, bring into this box you know that that can be as varied as what you're going to put in the box in the end so i'm going to take you through as i create a box that's going to be for my sacred to store my decks in to store my decks in when not in use but still easy to grab you know, put them in here like this this is going to work out. And then I just grab the box and set up my, you know, set up my reading area when I start to do the readings. So 
art, it's an art video, but it's also, it's, it doesn't have to be any art experience as always. This is just, we're going to build layers, starting with the intention, and then we're going to put different sacred symbols on it. And it can, you could also, I'm going to do painting on all my layers, I believe. But you could use collage, stickers, uh, there's no limit to how you can decorate the, the vessel. It's a sacred vessel. That's what this uh, mini art class is going to be about, or this spiritual art class is going to be about. So come along with me as we create a sacred vessel, and I hope that you'll enjoy it and create something really cool yourself. Okay, so I've got it nice and mixed up. Yeah, I was going to say, there's been times in the past where I didn't have gesso, and I would just use um, just flat white paint in, on wood as a primer coat. And I would just buy plywood. I remember one time I bought a couple sheets of plywood and I had, if you go to like these home improvement stores like Home Depot and, or Lowe's, you know, depending on what you have in your area, you know, they have these scrap pieces or you can just buy a piece of higher, and they'll cut it to size. And I remember I cut, a, I had a bunch of them that I cut into like square canvases. It almost looked like this and then I put, um, you know, then I put boards on the side and I made myself a whole bunch of uh, wood canvases at one time and what I put I didn't have gesso and all I did was just put some white paint just some flat white paint that I had trying to find a good way to hold this so that uh, this is just like a base coat there's going to be a lot of layers I'm going to use the same techniques that we're using to for the uh, spiritual creativity painting stuff that I've been doing painting, you know, uh, as a meditation or f to use it for manifestation for what you're wanting, you know, to set your intention, basically. Uh, so I'm going to use, you know, that technique on here. So I, I don't even care if it's really covered well. That's not even a thing. Although I do, I think, I'm not going to, I think I'm going to leave the inside. Um, I do want the very top lid there, that little top lip. I want that not, I don't want to leave that natural wood. I'm going to put a little bit of a coat on. Uh... Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is infuse it with some intention and some words. Now the words will be painted over and probably just be part of the design, sort of in the background design. There's going to be a lot of different layers and as we're, uh, just as you do the magical uh, spiritual painting, you can charge this container up with spiritual things that you want. I went over here and I made a, a short list. I was just doing it while I was waiting for the paint to dry. Yours could be anything you want. You can, um, because maybe if you, especially like if you know the name of your spirit guide, if you work with a, a specific spirit guide or you call on, you know, the, the different angels or whatever you, whatever you use and whatever you feel comfortable writing down, these are the things that you can put on your first layer. Um, now I'm just going to start with uh, some cool colors. You usually, if you don't, if uh, you should try to go cool, then warm. And if you don't know, let me pull up a color wheel real quick here. Color wheel here. If you don't understand that, you can find a color wheel anywhere. And these are the cooler colors on this side: the blues and purples and greens. And then the, the warm colors, think of warm like the sun, that's how I always remember it. The warm colors are the colors of the sun, which are like yellow, oranges, and reds. Usually, if you mix them, I guess it wouldn't really matter at this point, but I'm going to start with some cool colors, also because I feel, I don't know, I just feel like that's just a vibe that I want to do. I, I suppose if you wanted to start with the, you know, the warm palette, you could start with the warm palette. But when you mix both together, that's when it just turns into a big muck. It turns all mucky and gray and black. Um, that's actually a way you can create, you know, grays and blacks. That's the way when I, back in the day when I took painting classes, that's what they, we were never supposed to use black. It was not allowed. Um, you had to mix up. It, it was like really taboo to use black. I know people use black all the time now, and I use black too, but for this first part, um, I'm just going to start, we're going to start with some words. Again, you're, we're going to put symbols and all sorts of stuff all over this. You could even collage it. You could put decoupage, different things on it. I'm probably going to paint the whole the whole deal, but so I wrote some words over here, some lists. I don't know if I'll get everything on here, but I think um, I really want higher guidance. That's going to be a big thing that I'm going to want to attract, and like doing it kind of sloppy, kind of makes for cool lines and underlayments later. 
So uh, don't try to, this is going to be covered over and just part of the background, but the, <clears throat> the energy of the word is, the words is still in here. So I want higher guidance. That's one of the big things that I want out of this is going to be where my deck is kept now you could um it's not going to quite fit but we're going to make it fit higher guidance all right i'm going to put guidance somewhere else here um and i want uh i'm going to i'm going to start on the other side and do another word on the other side i definitely want uh, i'm going to put guidance again because i want that to be very clear that i do want guidance from this the decks. Since the decks are my own too, it's going to be kind of a little bit of a spin on that too because I store my own decks that I make in here that I've designed. So guidance and then clarity was another big one. Clarity. So we're just starting out with words again. Yours, you, could, you could write, I'm calling on my spirit guide or my angel whatever you want. You could. You don't have to just, I'm putting just keywords, you could write out actual whole sentences and things if you wanted to. Enlightenment. And then I'm going to write enlightenment going this way. And, you know, it doesn't have to follow uh, a straight line. So I've pretty much covered this whole thing with um, some words. And um, now I'm just going to go ahead and again, just let it dry. And then we're going to come back and we're going to keep creating layers and creating layers. Um, we're going to put symbols on here that are meaningful to us. These words are here. They're part of, they're in there. They're part of this box. They're part of this vessel. They're part of this container. And again, you don't have to do this exactly this kind of box. You can get a plain wood box from the craft store. And you don't have to do it just for your divination decks. You can do, put, you can charge a box with energy and put your crystals in it. You can put any, I mean, just anything. It's endless, you know. Jewelry, like, you know, especially like sacred, you know, jewelry that's made from gemstones and stuff. You can keep it in a box that's charged with energy. Okay, so we're going to let this dry. I'm going to clean my hands off and we'll be back to do some more work. Okay, everyone, I'm back, and we're going to move over and do some of the warm colors. Um, it's just about dry. Uh, and as it was drying again, I was kind of thinking of some words. And so we're just going to go over and just you know, write, on, write over it. I have a few colors here. I have a real dark. I have a um, crimson from golden and then I have poster paints again or whatever they are just the acrylic you know craft paints I have around I had some orange and yellow you know you could just use whatever you want you can mix them right up there's no right or wrong way here I really want to use this orange and I think I really want it a little darker so I'm going to pull a little bit of that uh, get it more of a deeper hue yeah yeah, and sometimes if you leave it sort of halfway mixed, you know, just a little bit, it, the both of the colors will come through on the brush. I like, you know, I like doing that too. But I'm gonna write really big shine. Because I want, what I'm putting in here is my tarot decks that I've uh, designed and created, my animal totem decks, and I want them to really shine. And then I'm also going to come over here and we're going to get some yellow. And I definitely wanted it to um, resonate. So I'm going to do like, so that's what I was talking about, where you get more than one color. I've got the yellow and the uh, little bit of that other paint still on there. I like that. And that can get, that can give a nice effect, you know, later on. So I'm going to put, um, 
to resonate. It's, and, and, and right now it's looking just like a big mess, but that's okay. You do want to really let those layers dry too, because otherwise, I mean, it's dry, it's sort of tacky. Res, uh, otherwise, it, it's just going to turn into a big giant muck. So you don't want, you don't want a big giant muck. <laughs> you want it to be, um, you want to have distinctive different like designs and stuff going on and yeah it just looks like a bunch of scribbly crazy right now but believe me as we go along this is just the background this is just creating a background for us and some interest uh, I was gonna save like the swirlies and designs for next time but I feel like I want to put a few little swirlies in over here resonate okay and then what else did I have here uh, radiate um, I'm just going to put love, you know, why not? Love is always a good thing to put on anything, right? You could put anything you want on this. The, the intention is that we're going to, uh, you know, attract. These are the things we want to attract and encompass whatever we have in our boxes here, whatever we're going to have in our, our sacred containers, our sacred vessels. All right, so we're back, and this is the phase, like where almost like the doodling, where your subconscious mind comes in, and we're just going to be going through and picking. So I've I've picked like a lighter pastel palette for this. I've got a uh, yellow, pink, and a um, lavender light purple, uh, which is moving into the cooler colors, but it's I, I feel like it's going to be okay, and. We're going to fill in, but we're also going to just, it's just a real loose meditation as we just think about the words clarity, positive attraction, and you, you can do X's, O's. Just, it's not about thinking that much about it. It's just about kind of going for it. You could put sacred symbols if you have, like you could put uh, hearts or peace signs that might not even be in the final uh, piece. So like that was a heart, I'll do another one here, and sort of like a heart. But don't, you could paint it in, but you, it's good to like kind of let a little bit of the, the other layers still show through here. And I know, it, again, it's still looking kind of mucky and messy, but you gotta, trust me, it's not gonna look like this when it's done. These are like layers of consciousness. Right, so now the whole thing is pretty much covered. There's a few white spots. If you want to get persnickety and get in there and cover those white spots, you know, but uh, you don't have to. But we've got a lot of different kind of shapes and interests that are, are happening in the background. I think that purple may have been a mistake, so I, I kind of want to get away from that purple somewhat. Some real heavy. Uh, I'm seeing a triangle shape here, and I feel like I want to maybe emphasize that triangle. But you don't want to cover it all up. And then this is reminding me a little bit of a sun coming up here or something. Um, just kind of go with the flow. It, it's still in the phase of not really having to be anything yet. It's still in the phase of just, you know, meditation, stream of consciousness, relaxation putting paint on the 
canvas, which in this case is a box, you know, whatever whatever the canvas is. So I've got this yellow paint, so I'm just like dabbing it on real heavy so it doesn't uh, get in that mud, you know, I don't want it to turn to that muddy. A lot of times I'll just do that, I'll just use up um, whatever I have on the plate in whatever way. And I'm just emphasizing a couple of these little uh, spots that I liked these little shapes that I liked. I'm sort of outlining them for no particular reason. <laughs> Just because I felt like doing it that way. Alright, so I'm back and I'm going to do some more layers. Now we were going to get, I said I was going to start and in getting into the actual image drawing. And I have even done, laid out some roughs and stuff. Some just different ideas of how I might um, position, but it's not set in stone yet. But I do want to do another layer because I thought of some more words that I definitely want to put on there. And I'm going to put on some good astrology symbols too. I wanted to show you what I'm doing here, so I'm, I just was going like, shush, shush, it almost looked kind of watery, and I kind of liked it, so I left it. And inevitably, when that happens, some of it kind of bleeds over the edge, so I started, I, I didn't want to get too ahead of myself, but this is how you just kind of brush it in. You can put some water on your brush, and just sort of, you go over it, but you don't want to really cover up, you kind of blend it down and blend it in a little. Here, I'll start a fresh one. Actually, I want less paint on here. Um, I just want less paint and more water. So I just take this and I, I just blend it out a little bit. And then you can even, I, if it's too strong, because I don't like that it's a little too strong, you can like blot a little bit of it off. So that's how you're kind of building these layers. Um, and then you're still, because I know I'm going to more or less have sort of a darker background in the end, I think. You know, if that's what I feel because I'm seeing stars and moons. You know, if you, if you wanted, if you think you want a white background or white palette to start on, you know, not to start on, but, you know, for your imagery to be on, then you can, and I'm just sort of patting it away. Uh... I'm going to wipe a little bit of this off here and, and sort of, this is just a regular old napkin, you know. So, you could use glazing mediums and stuff, but you could just also just thin it out with some water or watered down, uh, really watered down. Uh, still quite a bit on this brush. Yeah, like that. So I'm putting it on and I'm just doing it really rough. Because I, I didn't want that big thick line up there. That big thick line of dark blue. So we're going to start bringing that dark blue down into here. I'm going to start putting in, laying in some actual symbols here. And I know for sure that I definitely want a sun on, on this thing here. I really like the psychic eye in the middle. 
and then I'm going to put all the symbols uh, around it. So what I'm going to do first for the psychic guy is I'm going to paint a big white triangle right in the middle, kind of very much centered. Okay, so I found the basic uh, moon phase thing that I, I kind of like. And it's just, I'm just going to do, find, kind of try to find the center. And then, of course, we'll have that full moon right in the center, the big full moon. And I'm going to go back again and, and pull some of it off. I'm just going to, uh, here. There we go. Because I, I don't know that I want it so boldly like that. I'm just drawing it right now. So this is a little, my brush is wet, so that's going to give another different effect that I actually wasn't wanting. <laughs> but so be it. And then we're going to have, you know, the half moons. We're going to have the half moons and then the uh, quarter moons. Okay, so I'm back, and, and to get some of these details, I think I went over some of this darker, too. This is where we had, I think I cleaned up the top. And to get some of these details in, I want to go over this with some markers, because um, it's hard. This is small. It's pretty small. It's only a couple inches, and it's hard to paint in that. So I'm going to go over. I have these shiny markers first. I'm going to go over, and I'm going to do... I'm going to outline this sword. And I may go back and even paint more into it later, but for right now, I'm just going to outline it like But I think I want to keep this real, like, sort of primitive, and um, so I'm just going to pull out a little charcoal and sketch it in first in the charcoal. I think I want a, an outline uh, of the outside, and then I'm going to have my eye, you know, maybe somewhere in here. And I'm just going to do a real fine sketch just to make sure that it's sort of centered and it looks okay, you know. Uh, that's going to be my all seeing eye. I think I want the eye to be purple, too.
Okay, back to our moons and stuff. I want to start going in and putting in a bunch of stars. That's good. Okay, so, you know, these are going to dry real fast. I think I'm done with it, and I'm, I'm happy with it. I mean, I think I would have been happier with it being, um, using collage pieces, you know, now that I got this far along in it, but, hey, it still looks cool, and it's going to, you know, it's going to be, it, the, the important thing is that it's really charged with all this energy. You know, it's really charged with the energy of what I'm trying to do with the, uh, the piece while I'm shuffling. Oops, not black, or white. I thought I still had my white in my hand. <laughs> oh, this, by the way, is, this is a cheap-ass pen from Michaels, and it's one of the best white ones that I have. I have a few different kinds. It's called Recollections. It was just some Michaels craft store carries these. And it really does go over, and you get that white effect there that really helps. I wonder if I want a little white down here. I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it stop. <laughs> yeah, so another thing I did too is I cleaned up the bottom last night off camera. So this is my cool new supercharged embodied with the things that I'm wanting to accomplish and do while shuffling my cards and charging my cards while in it. It's a sacred vessel and you could put anything in it. What I'm going to use for a final sealer is just the stuff that I use on um, for furniture. I'm, I'm going to use a, a satin so I'm going to give it a couple coats of that, too, once everything's dry. And then I'll be using it for the reading. Now, I left the inside um, natural because even if I were to paint it, smashing the cards on there after time is just going to chip that all away. So I left my inside um, natural wood, but you could do it any way you want. Okay, so there it is. The Sacred Vessel uh, Tarot Card Shuffling Holding uh, Container Tutorial. So I hope that you guys try it. I'd love to see what you come up with. And again, it could be just about anything. You could use it for just about anything. You could use it for jewelry, crystals, uh, anything. Anything that you want to charge up and really put some vibes on, you know. It's all there. Even though it's not visible anymore, all the words and all the energy that we put in the very beginning is still there. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you try it at home.